It's been over 200 years, and still, not a single major city has emerged in Northern Australia. Why? We're talking about a region with massive land, rich resources, and a strategic global position. And yet, silence. Other nations have built metropolises in the middle of deserts, on the edge of tundras, deep in jungle frontiers. So why not here? The easy answers? Cyclones, isolation, heat, distance. But that's not the full story. Not even close. What really stopped the North from rising isn't just geography. It's history, politics, and a string of choices Australia still hasn't reckoned with. The truth is layered, uncomfortable, and frankly, shocking. Because what happened here isn't just neglect. It may be Australia's greatest urban failure, and a missed opportunity the country can't afford to repeat. And as the world changes, through climate pressure, security shifts, and economic realignment, this question becomes urgent again. Why does the North remain cityless? And will it stay that way forever? By the end of this video, you'll see why the answer might shape Australia's future. The weather in Northern Australia makes it very hard to build big cities. It's hot and wet almost all year. In the summer, it can reach over 40 degrees Celsius, and the air feels sticky from the high humidity. These conditions can damage buildings, break power systems, and make life hard. The area also gets hit by strong storms like cyclones, which can flood towns and tear down homes. Some places flood often, and the ground is too soft or unstable to build big buildings. Even if something is built, it might not last long. But here's the strange part. Other countries have built big cities in hard places like deserts, icy lands, and deep jungles. So why not here? If people can build cities in worse places, what's really stopping Northern Australia? Yes, people have built cities in deserts and icy places, but Northern Australia is different. Here, it's not just the weather, it's the land itself. The coast has swamps and wetlands that are hard to build on. Go inland, and it's all dry dirt, hard rock, and land that can't grow food. It's not just difficult, it feels like a battle against nature. And then there's the water problem. There are no big, fresh water sources. That means no farms. And without farms, you can't grow food for a city. In most places, nature helps a little. Rivers, good soil, or flat land. But in the north, nature gives nothing to work with. That's why it's so hard to start a city there. Still, people did try. Early colonists tried to build cities in the north. So, why didn't those towns grow big? Yes, people really did try to build cities in the north, not just once, many times. But each time, the plans failed. Why? Because of the same problems. Harsh land, disease, and being too far from everything. Two big examples are Fort Dundas, 1824, and Port Essington, 1838. At first, they looked promising, but they didn't last. No jobs, no trade, and no reason for people to stay. Now, they're just ruins. While cities in the south were growing from trade, gold rushes, and railroads, the north had bugs, storms, and isolation. There was no spark to keep cities alive. And because those early cities failed, there was nothing to build on. No old roads, no growing towns, just empty land. That's why the north kept starting over and failing. But today we have better tech, right? So, could modern tools finally fix it? Yes, we have better technology now. But it only works if people build with it. And in Northern Australia, no one really did. There are no big highways that cross the land. There's no train line going deep into the outback. Even the electricity and internet are weak in many places. That means everything costs more here. To build a house or run a business, every brick, tool, or machine has to come from far away. That wastes time and money. In the South, cities are all connected. In the North, it feels like another world, cut off from the rest of the country. Without roads, rail, and strong power, cities can't grow. But still, we know there are mines, soldiers, and bases in the North. Doesn't that bring in people and money? Let's take a closer look. The North brings people in, but it doesn't make them stay. Most of the workers in the North don't live there full time. They fly in, work for a few weeks, then fly back home. This is called a fly-in, fly-out job. There are no houses to raise families, no schools for kids, no real neighborhoods or parks, just airstrips, mines, and work camps. Mining in the North makes billions of dollars, but cities don't grow from money alone. They grow when people move in, stay, and build a life. 
The money leaves, and so do the people. All that's left behind is empty land and machines. The North works without big cities, and that's the problem, because when something works just enough, no one is in a hurry to change it. This is why even big money hasn't built a real city in the North. Mines are temporary, cities are forever, and right now no one is planning forever. But wait, couldn't the government fix this? Couldn't leaders make a plan to finally build something real and lasting in the North? Let's find out. Could the government have built up the North? Yes, but it never really tried. For over 100 years, leaders focused on the South. That's where the money went. That's where the roads, trains, and internet were built first. Even when there were plans for the North, they didn't last. In 2013, there was a big idea. Make the Northern Territory a low-tax zone to attract people and jobs. It got canceled. Billions were promised for ports and train lines. Most were delayed, cut, or forgotten. The truth is, the North was never part of a big long-term plan. There was no vision to grow it like the rest of the country. It became a place for short-term use, not long-term building. The government didn't build routes here, so no one else did either. But maybe there's a reason for that. What if the real issue isn't climate, money, or roads? What if the land was never truly ours to shape in the first place? Before cities and roads, this land already had caretakers. Indigenous people have lived in the North for thousands of years. Today, much of the land is indigenous owned. Big cities can't just be built here without talking to the people who care for it. Building needs more than cement. It needs respect, agreement, and trust. Without that, it's not just bad planning. It can hurt cultures and erase histories. Even today, there is no city in the North with over 200,000 people. Not Darwin, not Cairns, not Townsville. Maybe that's not a failure. Maybe it's a choice to protect the land, not cover it in concrete. So, what does all of this tell us about the future of Australia's north? Northern Australia didn't fail. It made a different choice. The weather, the land, and the people's history created a boundary no amount of money can push through. We often think, no cities means something went wrong. But maybe, no cities means something was right. This is a place with huge land and no giant cities. Maybe that's not strange. Maybe this land was never meant to be taken. It was meant to be respected. Now think about today's world. It's getting hotter, busier, and louder every year. And yet, this place stays quiet. Maybe the last true treasure is the land we chose not to change. Sometimes real progress is not about building more. It's about knowing when to stop. What's happening in Northern Australia shows us something big. Money, nature, and people's stories don't always work together. This isn't just about cities. It's about what kind of future we want. Like, subscribe, and share if this made you think. Question for you. Should Australia build a huge city up north? Or is it smarter to leave it quiet? Tell us in the comments. Would you move to a big city in the north? Or do you think it's better left alone?